Hello, and thank you for tuning in to this very important episode of InRange. If you've watched any of our content before, you'd know that I normally start the video holding some sort of kinetic weapon, a handgun, a rifle, submachine gun, something historical, something modern. And, and today is no different, however, this is not a kinetic weapon. I have in front of me, or in my hand, two different items. I have a Motorola 6810 CPU, an old central processing unit from my old Amiga 500 that I used to hack on in the late 80s, and a $2 bill, representative of money. These are weapons. These are the weapons of today, and these are the weapons you need to be concerned with for the future of the internet, the future of the freedom of information, and your data, as well as your personal liberty. I bring you the CPU because this is one of the computers I started with. This is the computer that I really learned to think with. I learned to understand the beginnings of online communication and the flow of data and information with. So this CPU, while I don't have the computer anymore, is probably not even functional. I don't know. The pins are bent. But I keep it as a memoir of where I started. This was, as Steve Jobs said, a bicycle for my mind. And the internet and the computers of today are bicycles for your minds. Just like they were then, they still are today. This has enabled me to communicate with people across the world. It enabled me to learn things I could have never learned otherwise. And it empowered me to think in a critical and logical way that I don't know that I would have had without it. So this CPU is a reminder of that to me. This is the other weapon of the day. These two are working together and against one another dependent on who controls them. Some stuff's been going on with YouTube lately and we don't know all of the data around it, but here's what we do know. InRange started off as a Full30.com only project and the reason we did that is because we wanted to have better control of our content and advertisers with no corporate overlords. We have said with InRange we will never accept corporate sponsorship and we have not. We have received some items here and there, and we always disclose when we do, but we have no corporate overlords, no sponsorship. And for that first year, we tried very hard to make Full30 be our predominant content delivery network, liberated from the chains of what are things like Google and YouTube. That became increasingly impossible, and we realized it was not a winning strategy because we could not get to the eyeballs, the number of viewers, people like you, that we needed to from that new and fledgling service. So a year into it, we started going on to YouTube. And we've had quite a bit of success on YouTube for being there for a short, a relatively short duration of time. We've seen our subscribers flourish. We've seen our views flourish. We've had a very positive experience in, in general in reaching to a larger, broader community. We've also seen a number of you, a significant portion, stand up to the plate and sponsor us directly with your funds, your weapon, to Patreon. And for that, we are very thankful. We've also had, of course, ad revenue from YouTube. And the ad revenue is a small percentage portion of what we generate compared to what we're receiving from Patreon. And at this point, we are just at the edge of watching this project blossom and grow into something even bigger, predominantly because of people like our Patreon supporters, people like some of you watching this video right now. However, very recently, this month in fact, we saw the ad revenue on YouTube, which is still important to us, unfortunately, go significantly down. And then I started poking around and realizing this is happening to other people. Other channels are having this problem. Almost every, if not all, of the firearms related channels that we're aware of are complaining about this particular issue right this moment and we're in communication with them and they're seeing the same thing. However, if you look further back than that, you'll see other channels being affected as well. Some people, especially even prominent, the most prominent YouTuber, PewDiePie, is talking about the same very thing. He started experiencing problems like this a month ago, if not a longer. And he's gotten into a sort of war with the Wall Street Journal and other media outlets. Well, at first it seemed like it was targeted to PewDiePie. But now what we're seeing is it's targeting a broader scope. And a whole bunch of ad revenue generators, or essentially sponsors of ads for YouTube, have pulled out in very recent days. In fact, Google has put up a blog about this. And they're reacting in a way to try and fix the problem. What happened was the ad, the people putting ads on YouTube have concerns about their ads being put onto non-family friendly content. And there are things called restricted mode on YouTube, as well as other things that can demonetize your content, where you go to advertise and you put the button to monetize your video, and they will say you're not allowed to monetize it. Well, that's the different than what we're seeing now. The videos, for example, that we're suddenly seeing no ads on are monetized. The problem is, because we've been put into this mode, whether it be restricted mode or whatever the flags are, the people that are putting the ads into YouTube have said they do not want this type of content being associated with their advertising. Well, this is very much like the old rating boards for the movies. 
as you may or may not be aware of, you have G, PG, PG-13, R, NC-17. Many movies nowadays are censored that might be an NC-17 rating because they do not wish to get an NC-17 rating because it's a death knell to them and their ability to sell tickets. Well, having specific flags on YouTube, even if your content is monetized, as of right now, the very beginning of April, um, is suddenly not demonetized, but not getting enough, enough ads associated with it. Probably because it's considered not family friendly. Of course, the concept of not family friendly or restricted is completely dictated by people other than you, the viewer. So, here's what happens. You have essentially an ersatz demonetization of content, and a lot of YouTube people, actually enraged less so affected than others because we put our emphasis on Patreon, are dramatically affected by this, and only not only firearms content producers. There's a number of channels right now complaining of this particular issue, and we don't know if they're going to figure out a way to solve it that addresses this concern for the larger creator content creators, or if it's something other than that. So at this moment, I don't know what's going to happen or change, so this video may become irrelevant, but it won't be, because what we're seeing here are the machinations of what's planned to come. Here's the reality, in my opinion. I speak for me and only me on this particular topic, Ian is not here in this video, I can't speak for him, he'd have to speak to it himself. But here's what I'm going to say. The old media, and media is power, right? Media's always been power. He who controls the information and the communication methods and channels controls the general consensus of the community. That's propaganda. Always has been. Propaganda can be used for positive and negative. The old media, the old media engines, are watching their power slip away. They're seeing the decentralized internet and the decentralized flow of information on the internet usurp and destroy their hand and control over the mindset of the average viewer. Most people don't watch a lot of TV anymore. They don't open up old newspapers. They go to the internet. They watch YouTube. They watch Full 30 if they happen to. They read their media and content through different social networks or other news networks that are not the standard media campaigns and power-hungry mongers that exist before the internet. Now that they see their power structure failing, they started a war against some people, PewDiePie one of them, in which they stated that they were not going to allow their ads to be put onto what they considered not family-friendly content. Family-friendly content being leveraged as a way, a control, and a tool for potential censorship. So, that said, it is now beyond PewDiePie. It is now swath, cutting a swath against many different pieces of YouTube, many type of content creators, and many different types of content. So what I think you're seeing here is social economic warfare being waged by the old media and the old media engines to try and understand and, and usurp and compromise that which YouTube has created through the decentralized, crowd-sourced content that is currently there and being displayed. Now, if this changes, it might. Maybe YouTube will realize that this was a mistake on their part and they are going to fix it, and we will see some of this change, not just for InRange, but for all of these channels. But I'm telling you that this is the future. And the reason this is the future is because I see a growing aggregation of power on the Internet. You see YouTube being the predominant and almost only video content distribution point. There are others, but really YouTube's the winner. You see Google being the predominant aggregator and search engine. You see Google being tied into your web browser. You see Facebook being the, almost the sole channel for social communication. When we, as the consumer, allow that aggregation to occur, we are once again centralizing the power in the hands of a small few. And that's not what the Internet enables us to do. The Internet enables us to decentralize those things, to provide the power back to us, the people, the consumers, the viewers. So it's up to us to allow them to have that power. Always has been. Regardless of the laws, regardless of what they do, regardless of their machinations, we as the viewers and consumers determine where that power lies. And we determine that with things like this, where we put our money. This, the CPUs, the computers that we use to distribute that information, how we decentralize that information, and how we allow them to advertise to us or not. So in regards to Patreon being our mechanism for being decentralized and being disassociated with the corporate overlords that provide advertising to YouTube, the reality is that by being associated with any standard large aggregated content distribution network, we still have corporate overlords. The way to fix that problem is for us to be wholly viewer supported and for anyone to be that's, that is considered controversial content to be viewer supported because then the power exists in the hands of the people that want to see the content, not in the hands of the people advertising on that network. 
The other way to decentralize and break that kind of power structure is to use other venues for that distribution network. Vimeo, Full30, Vidme is another one. Right now we are still we're on Full30 and YouTube, and we will see where that goes in the future within Range TV. But I just wanted to bring this argument to you and to the viewer and to a larger consumer base. Our digital rights, our future of the freedom of information exists in our hands, wholly and solely in our hands, regardless of what YouTube does, regardless of what the Wall Street Journal does, regardless of what the old media tries to do with their social economic warfare against the new systems. The reality is we, with our eyeballs, our money, and our computers, dictate this battlefield. They don't, unless we let them. So I just wanted to make you aware of what's going on. I don't know what's going to come of this, but I wanted to make it obvious, and I wanted to make a statement as to where things are going. And I wanted to make a call for action, not necessarily for you to support us on Patreon, although, of course, we greatly appreciate that. And the fact is, the minority of the viewers that do do that are enabling InRange to stay alive regardless of this type of shenanigans. But what I do want to call an action to is knowledge and realize that the weapons of today are the computer the networks, the money that you put where you put it, and how you allow them to dictate what you're allowed to see, watch, say, and do. So, support organizations like the EFF, support the creators you believe in, and let them know, most importantly, where the power lies. Thanks for watching. This is our world now. The world of the electron and the switch. The beauty of the bot. We make use of a service already existing without paying for what could be dirt cheap if it wasn't run by profiteering gluttons. And you call us criminals. We explore. And you call us criminals. We seek after knowledge. And you call us criminals. We exist without skin color, without nationality, without religious bias. And you call us criminals. You build atomic bombs, you wage wars, you murder, cheat, and lie to us and try to make us believe it's for our own good, yet we're the criminals. Yes, I am a criminal. My crime is that of curiosity. My crime is that of judging people by what they say and think, not what they look like. My crime is that of outsmarting you. Something that you will never forgive me for. I am a hacker, and this is my manifesto. You may stop this individual, but you can't stop us all. After all, we're all alike.